In this video, I will teach you how I make over a million dollars a year in profit working just 20 hours a week with only a single virtual assistant for my media business over at mywifequitterjob.com. These are a collection of philosophies and strategies that I've formulated over the years that allow me to maximize my productivity and time. So first off, I want to mention that I don't intentionally limit my work time to just 20 hours a week on purpose. I literally only have 20 hours per week of focused work because my kids and family occupy the rest of my time. And just to give you an idea, my afternoons are mostly spent driving my kids to their volleyball practices, robotics competitions, helping with homework, prepping dinner, you name it. Then my weekends are fully occupied with multi-day volleyball tournaments because my kids play club volleyball, which forces us to travel to these crazy competitions all over the US. There's almost one tournament every single weekend. But I don't mind because the goal of my businesses has always been to spend more time with family and not just for the sake of making more money. Could I make a lot more than a million dollars per year running mywifequitterjob.com if I work like a maniac? Absolutely, but that's not why I do it. Anyway, the business I'm gonna talk about today is my blog over at mywifequitterjob.com. I believe that creating content or any form of media is the highest leverage business that you can build if you are willing to stick with it for at least three years. Now, it's probably not the fastest way to make money, but once you reach a certain tipping point, the money flows in and it's infinitely scalable. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you pre-order my book, The Family First Entrepreneur below, where I talk about this stuff in way more depth. Okay, philosophy number one, focus on activities that can greatly leverage your time. Now, what does it mean to leverage your time? If I choose to work on something, it better bring me long-term gains without requiring continuous work. This means that I always avoid doing any sort of one-on-one -on -one consulting. I'll never start a service-based business or anything that involves trading time for money, even if I own the business. Now, the easiest way for me to illustrate this point is to talk about social media. I am often asked why I don't focus a lot of my time on social media platforms like Facebook or Instagram. And the reason is because I view these platforms as hamster wheels. Granted, Facebook and social media are great ways to build traffic and sales, but you have to constantly post in order to make that happen. My friends who do social media well post at least seven times per day. A friend of mine who has 3 million followers on Facebook posts 21 times per day. And guess what? If they decide not to post in any given day, the traffic immediately stops. Now to me, that sounds like a treadmill. If you stop posting, the traffic and sales stop coming. This is why I don't dedicate a large portion of my time to social media. Now I'm on Instagram and Facebook, but it's not a focus of mine. Let's contrast social media with Google. When it comes to organic traffic generation, I spend most of my time on Google's properties like SEO and YouTube. Why is that? It's because I know that if I create a good piece of content, Google will find a way to proliferate it for a very long time. For example, I have blog posts that I've written 10 years ago that still generate me thousands of visitors today. I have YouTube videos I filmed over two years ago that still bring me hundreds of viewers per day. Google traffic is a great form of leverage because you can do something once and reap the rewards in the long term. Social media, in my opinion, is generally not a great use of your time if you extrapolate out the return on your work for an extended period. Now, I'm not saying that social media isn't effective because it is but it's not nearly as leveraged as other platforms. Today, Google brings me hundreds of thousands of visits per month to my blog. This YouTube channel that you are watching right now generates over $350,000 per year in AdSense revenue on its own, and I only film a video a week. And now that I have my systems down, I can create a video in literally just 20 minutes. Furthermore, I repurpose all of my content. A single blog post gets converted into a YouTube video, which gets converted into multiple short videos for Reels, Instagram, and Shorts, which then get turned into short form Twitter threads. Everything I create is highly leveraged. Philosophy number two, hire robots, not humans. Now, even before ChatGPT, I've been using software and automation for over a decade now to automate my entire businesses. Here's a pet peeve of mine. Whenever I go to a conference or an event, the first question I'm usually asked is, how large is your team? And I hate this question because the size of your team seems to be correlated with how well you are doing with your business. And when I tell people that I operate on just a single VA to make over a million dollars in profit, people are often shocked. Now, how is that possible? The answer is simple. 
systems and software. Back before 2016, I was an engineering director running a decent sized team at a Fortune 500 company for years and I didn't particularly enjoy it. Managing people is a headache. You have to keep them motivated, you have to make sure that they are excited about their work, and you have to listen to their problems, most of which are not even work related. Computers are much more reliable and you can automate far more than you think. Let's take ChatGPT as an example since it's been in the news. I have a couple of contract writers that help me create content on a weekly basis. But to be honest, ChatGPT writes as well or better than some of my writers. So right now, I am considering getting rid of most of my writers except for a couple and just have them run ChatGPT and then edit the post. At Bumblebee Linens, which is my e-commerce store, there are many humans we've replaced with software. Here's an example. We sell personalized products in our store and one of the most tedious steps is that we have to cut and paste the personalization from our website to a separate program which digitizes it in a way that can be understood by our sewing machines. Then this file must be exported to the machine itself to be embroidered. Now when we first started, it would literally take someone four hours a day to do this menial task every single morning. So what I did is I coded up a quick script that automated everything by simulating a human using the mouse and keyboard. You now literally just hit a button and the computer performs the entire process better and more reliably than a human. Here's another example. Most of the email correspondence that we get for our store is something along the lines of, hey Steve, where's my order? Or, hey Steve, has my order shipped yet? Now, we use a chatbot that answers these questions automatically. Because it's implemented through Facebook, the customer's email address is automatically detected so they don't have to type a thing. Now when it comes to hiring actual humans, I always try to hold out for as long as possible until it gets painful. Or if there are tasks that I just simply hate doing, I will hire someone. But in general, I almost never hire anything out that I don't have at least some working knowledge about. So for example, people often ask me who they can hire to outsource all of their marketing to. And the first thought that goes through my mind is, are you crazy? You wanna hire the lifeblood of your business, your marketing, to a third party company who doesn't care or understand your products as much as you do? Hiring humans should be your last resort, not the first thing that you do. And no, it's not a badge of honor to have a large team. By the way, once again, if you're enjoying these philosophies, make sure you pre-order my book, The Family First Entrepreneur below. Not only do I go into great depth about my philosophies, but you'll also receive three killer bonuses. My three day workshop on print on demand, a two day workshop on how to make passive income with content, and a six week challenge where I will personally help you figure out what your next side hustle is gonna be. Philosophy number three, sell as much to your existing customers as you can. Now, when most people start a business, they focus on getting more and more customers, and, and that's natural. You want to get the word out to as many people as possible. But here's the thing, attracting new customers to your business is expensive. Did you know that most people in e-commerce just try to break even on customer acquisition? I have some friends that are literally hemorrhaging money on the front end, paying for ads, in hopes of making up for it on the back end. Selling more to your existing customers is way easier. In fact, it is 65% easier to sell to an existing customer as it is to get someone brand new to buy. This is why I focus a significant amount of my efforts on email and SMS marketing. After all, you can't get people to come back to your business unless you have a way to do so. Now, if you go on at any of my sites, You'll notice that there are email forms above the content, below the content, in the middle of the content, by the pop-ups and the byline. And right now, I get over 200 new email subs every single day. And of these email signups, approximately 50 to 60% of them give me their phone numbers as well so I can send them text messages. Now incidentally, email and SMS is the best way to establish a strong brand. After all, what is a brand really? It is a symbol of your promise to customers. You can't get people to think about or remember your brand unless you get them back to your content or website over and over. Right now, email generates about 30% of our revenue for our e-commerce store and roughly 90% of the revenue from mywifequitterjob.com. For my e-commerce store, since we're in the wedding industry, our repeat customer rate is actually only 12%, but that 12% represents over 36% of our revenue. For mywifequitterjob.com, Almost a third of the people who have purchased my e-commerce course have purchased my other course on content creation. 
Repeat business is the most efficient way to make money on autopilot. Now, I'm not telling you to neglect new customer acquisition, but I'm saying that you should devote an equal amount of time on your existing customers as with your new ones. Philosophy number four, focus on what's moving the needle. Now, one of the worst habits that new entrepreneurs develop is shiny object syndrome. Maybe I should try to do everything. Maybe I should run Facebook ads, Google ads, TikTok ads, Instagram ads, SEO, social media, YouTube at the same time and just see what sticks. Now, if you follow this strategy, you will not do anything well. Instead, evaluate your different traffic sources and focus on the one that you think will generate you the biggest bang for the buck. This is what I do. Instead of trying to do everything at once, I pick one traffic source, exactly one, and focus on it for at least a year. So last year, YouTube was my priority. The year before that, it was Twitter. The year before that, it was Facebook ads. And because I focus all my efforts on one thing, I'm able to do it well and not dilute my efforts. Most importantly, I double down on what works. Recently, I did an analysis of where my best customers come from, and it was shocking what I found. It turns out that the customers I get from Facebook ads yield less than half the revenue of customers that arrive through Google. So in other words, a customer that arrives through a search on Google is double the value than a Facebook customer. As a result, I've dialed down my efforts on Facebook ads to focus more on Google. I'm still running Facebook ads, but just putting more emphasis on the traffic source that makes me the most money. Philosophy number five, I focus on profit. Now, all these internet gurus that you see online often toss around big numbers, but they never tell you how much money they are actually taking home. This is because your revenue number is your vanity metric. It's what sounds good. It makes you come across as successful. But I've been in a number of mastermind groups with other entrepreneurs, and you'll be surprised at how low some of their profit numbers are compared to their revenue. Now, if you wanna work less and make more, you have to make profit a priority. Don't waste your money trying to impress other people, buying fancy cars and hiring a large team. Instead, be as frugal as you can, keep track of your expenses like a hawk and don't over discount. I would much rather make 150K with a 100K profit than have a business that generates over a million bucks with a 100K profit. Now, why is that? Well, because all the extra overhead of making a million bucks will add up over time to create more mental and physical stress. Again, if you're anything like me and you have a family and people you care about, you don't want to be spending all your time working. If you're anything like me, you probably don't want to start the next billion dollar company. And if you're like me, you probably just want the freedom to spend time doing what you love or spending time with your loved ones. Now, if you follow these five philosophies, then you are well on your way to running a business or side hustle that makes a hell of a lot of money with very little staff working as few hours as possible. This is, in my opinion, the American dream. Not people like Elon Musk who work 100 hour work weeks and are strangers to their kids and loved ones. Now, if you want to learn more, make sure you pre-order my book, The Family First Entrepreneur below. Now that you know how to create a lean and mean business, watch this video here to learn about all of my 12 income streams and how I manage it all.